Well, hello there. Welcome back. How's everybody doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Did you miss me? I missed you. Welcome back to World of Rucraft, episode 2. Yeah. Today we will return to our new friend, Luther the Paladin. Luther is setting out on a brand new adventure in Westfall, and he is trying to solve the murder of the Foulbrow family. But before we start, let's talk a little bit about Westfall, the region today's adventure is taking place in. Once a proud land of farmers and herders, Westfall now lies fallow for the most part because of the thieves who usurped it. Weeds and seedling trees mark the rich land, and the wind cries over the fields. Thieves and bandits are the greatest problems here, but gnolls and the slouching harvest golems also terrorize the already harried farmers. Westfall has the mild temperatures of Elwyn, but winds batter it both from the sea and from duskward. The bare farmlands add little to break the wind which can cut through clothing on a blustery day. The region is one of rolling pastures and farms that were once beautiful and green, but the life seems to have been drained from the very land. The sweeping plains have become barren and drought. The grass is yellowed and the fields are infested with ravenous carrion birds and mechanical harvest watchers gone rogue. A group of bandits still possesses a large mine with an entrance somewhere in the small town of Moonbrook, and rumor remains that they have a connection with the kobolds that occupy the Jengalot mine in Westfall. And let's not forget the flood of now homeless Stormwind citizens who were forced to take shelter in Westfall after Deathwing's attack on the capital. I do think that's a reasonable amount of backstory, so let's check back in with our hero. On his hunt for the Furball's murderer, he interviews the group of homeless people near the crime scene. Some of them are ready to talk freely, some of them need some bribing, others just need a good old beating. Not satisfied with the results, he looks deeper into the nearby Nall and Murloc population. Luther's investigations yield a mysterious piece of red cloth and a weird ladder. What does this mean? Even his contact to the authorities, Lt. Horatio Lane can't help him figure this out. But he refers him to one of his confidential informants, the hobo Two Shoot Lou. And it seems that Luther finally struck gold. While using Lou's old house in the Changelot mine, he witnesses the meeting between the Cobalt Overlord Gliptok and a shadowy figure. Who is the stranger? And why is she recruiting the Ogre Mage? Following the stranger's trail, Luther is able to locate the group of thugs responsible for the Fallbrow's murder. And now it's time to apply some swift justice. But this isn't right, there's more. Someone paid the group to kill the unsuspecting farmers. Who is behind all this? There's no time to relax since another murder shakes Westfall. Two shoot Lou bites the dust. Now it's personal, he was a friend. Luther's search brings him to the Salden farmstead. Farmer Salden is said to be well informed in this part. But getting information isn't that easy. He has to prove himself by fighting off rogue robots and helping Miss Salden prepare dinner. That's right, yay for Luther. The trail gets hotter as Salma Saldin refers us to her daughter Hope in Sentinel Hill. Our hero arrives in Sentinel Hill no second too late as a band of Nolls is attacking the Alliance base. During this attack, Luther is able to get his hands on the Nolls' attack orders. A goblin named Helix Gearbreaker is ordering the attacks in order to break free a captured walk called Ripsnarl. Good thing is all tied up and well guarded. Kinda. This thing goes deeper as the simple murders of the Fallbrows and Two Shoot Lou. With the help of SI7 agent Kiernan, our hero manages to eavesdrop on a conversation between Gearbreaker and the familiar shadowy figure. What is going on here? What is the dawning? And how is the quiet little mining town Moonbrook involved in this? Further investigations into Moonbrook are interrupted by masked bandits. Who is trying to stop our detective? Things get more mysterious as the shadowy figure is rallying the homeless people of Moonbrook to rise up and throw down the human government. Luther needs more information. Waiting on Lieutenant Lane to make contact, he is free to approach other matters. Like feeding the homeless and hunting for a hidden private treasure. The treasure turns out to be a fluke, a shirt is all he gets. And things get more mysterious as his treasure hunt leads him to a lighthouse. A lighthouse haunted by a spooky ghost. Okay, the ghost isn't that spooky. He's actually kinda cool since he provides him with some work. 
Refreshed and ready to kick more butt, Luther finally obtains the final piece of the puzzle. With a shaman's help, he uncovers the truth behind the shadowy figure. Venturing into the aptly named Dead Minds, he witnesses the final moments of the dreaded Defias Brotherhood. Under the lead of Edwin van Cleef, the Defias Brotherhood used the Dead Minds as the base of operation to build a giant warship. Said warship should be used to raid Stormwind and overthrow the human government. But five years ago, Van Cleef was defeated by a brave group of heroes. The remaining Defiers were either arrested or scattered into the wind. Here it is that our hero learns the true tragic behind Van Cleef's demise. His young daughter Vanessa bird witness to his death. It all makes sense now. Our detective rushes back to Sentinel Hill to inform Horatio Lane of his findings. But he is too late. Hope Salden reveals her true self. She is Vanessa Van Cleef. <laughs> the Saldans only adopted her after that fearful night five years ago. Now bent on revenge, she and her group of Defias bandits launch an assault on Sentinel Hill, setting the whole town ablaze. Barely escaping the ordeal, Luther knows what has to be done. The Defias Brotherhood has to be stopped before they can launch another attack on Stormwind. So it's time to gear up and gather a group of heroes to clean out the dead mines. Nobody can stop our heroes. Gloobtuck is reduced to ash, Helix broke his last gear and Admiral Ripsnarl... ripped his last snarl? And it is here, on the same boat as five years ago, that our group of heroes confront the Defias Kingpin. A murloc named Cookie? Wait, 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 hang on a second. That's my reward for all this? A freaking rolling pin? Fuck you, Blizzard. Fuck you. I spent two hours playing your stupid detective quest and fought through a freaking dungeon. And this stupid story didn't come up with itself. And that's my reward? A fucking rolling pin? I'm, I'm calm. I'm calm. I'm sorry. I have to apologize for that. <clears throat> with the Defias Kingpin defeated, but Vanessa Van Cleef still in the wind, Peace returns to Westfall, and our hero of the light continues his adventure in Azeroth. His path leads him to the east, to the gloomy forest of Duskwood. And that's all I have prepared for today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this little review slash story. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. We will return to Azeroth in a couple of days. Until then, bye bye.